Now, it's been five months since the U.S. successfully transitioned to a T plus one settlement after more than three years of industry-wide preparation, co coordination and collaboration. The shortened U.S. settlement cycle brings greater operational efficiencies and lower margin requirements, while at the same time reducing risk in the financial system. Yeah, we are joined right now by DTCC's Nellie Dagdag. She's Managing Director, APAC Marketing and Communications. For her insights on industry best practices and tried and tested strategies to meet accelerated settlement requirements. Nellie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, the world looked at T plus one with uh, great attention. What have been the challenges in your view been from this part of the world? So the challenges faced by everyone all over the world is pretty also consistent for APAC. Notably, the shortened settlement cycle means a shorter window for post-trade processing. Uh, but specific to APAC clients, there are notable two challenges. Um, one of them is the familiarity or lack of familiarity with the post-trade in the U.S. market. As you see, the U.S. market has evolved over decades. Mm -hmm. It's pretty complex mm -hmm. and it's not not very similar to how markets in the APAC um, operates. Uh, by and large, because of the structure of the US market, when it was still T plus two, the investors in APAC didn't have to worry about them yeah. because the, the intermediaries do these things for them. But with T plus one and the shortened window, the investors now have to be very involved and they have to learn in a fast way what this thing all about. And so a lot of education campaign happened over, all throughout the, over two years among custodians, broker dealers, uh, DTCC of course, and globally it's been sort of a whirlwind education <laughs> campaign. Fortunately, we got there yeah. and things uh, move smoothly in the last minute. The other one is funding and FX. So because you are in a base currency, uh, not, not the, the settlement currency, is US dollar, the APAC clients, if they are not long on the US dollars, will have to secure the dollars. And because of the time zone difference, usually, especially if it's a Friday, yeah. then those trades will have to be funded on a Saturday, which is a challenge. Yeah. So those are the top two challenges mm. that are specific to APAC markets. Mm. So I'm going to ask you to educate us now, Nelly, if I can. How can <laughs> firms in APAC leverage the US T plus one uh, implementation experience to be better prepared uh, as other markets look to uh, move to accelerated settlement? Yes, definitely. There's a lot of learning to be had. Mm. In fact, uh, which materials could be researched on usd1.org. Also, I should point out that APAC actually had the benefit of India moving to T plus one sooner than the US. Right. And even earlier than that, China has always been on T plus one since it started. So shorter settlement cycle is not foreign to APAC clients. Mm -hmm. So as I said earlier, what was unique about the US was the market structure, not so much the shortening. But to your point, uh, APAC clients should be able to leverage what they learn in the US yeah implementation as well as the India implementation okay. is that they should be in the discussion table early on. They have to know what the impact to them is because the impact would be different to each, to each particular situation. So yeah. they have to really understand what's going to change and then do a self-analysis. Yeah. What does this mean to me, to my operating model, to yeah. my technology stack, to my people? So all those things they'll have to do on their own, with the help, of course, of their, uh, of their intermediaries and counterparties. Yeah. And they have to look at it from the entire ecosystem. Yeah. It's not just their own shop. Yeah. Like the people that they have, uh, they have to hand off information yeah. to receive information from. It's a whole ecosystem and they have to move in tandem at the same time. It's everybody has to jump on the same day. Yeah. You, they, you don't have a choice of, I want to convert later than anybody else. It's, there's a single cutover date and you have to be prepared. Yeah. And so that alone, they have to already, even before the, the other markets will move, they have to really self-assess how ready they are in terms of process, people, technology, yeah. and already invest in those, even with the, with the mindset. Yeah. Every new change that they will, look, they will do, system or process, they should have T plus one or even shorter settlement cycle in their mind. I have no doubt that a lot of people are taking notes right now, and those are all great points. What other key considerations do you see from other markets, especially in the Asia Pacific, mm. as they make that transition to T plus one? Because as you said, there are just so many challenges. What other advice can you provide? Yes, I always say it's never too early to talk about T plus one yeah. or shortened settlement cycle, yeah. because there's so many things to do even before that date would come. 
So as early as possible, the entire ecosystem, the market infrastructure, the regulators, the industry, the market players, they should all begin thinking about this and assess what does this mean to the market. Now, <clears throat> the big challenge for each market is really determining why are they moving? What's the rationale? When the U.S. moved to the T plus one, the, the, the justification is pretty straightforward. Savings of three billion U.S. dollars in terms of margin is not a joke. It's, like, it's a huge number. But that's not, the tr that's not the case for other smaller markets. So you may not have the same justification. Margin may not be the savings in margin may not be the rationale for moving to T plus one. In fact, if you look at India, margin savings was not the reason. Mm -hmm. The India move to T plus one was driven by retail investors. Mm -hmm. The retail investors wanting to get hold of their cash. The crypto mindset, there were a yep. surge of retail investors in India over the COVID years. And therefore, these investors are now clamoring for faster settlement because they want to get their money, hands on their money and do more trades. Because of that, the regulators and the market infrastructures in India actually determined that the solution was shortening the settlement cycle. Mm -hmm. So that alone you will see mm -hmm. that the reason for moving to T plus one or any shortened settlement cycle would vary greatly depending on the market. Yeah. So you have to very, the, the, each market would have to really know why the, what's mm -hmm. driving the decision mm -hmm. so that they can tailor fit all the decisions mm -hmm. and their actions towards that common goal. Now we know the uh, we know the US SEC passed rules to pave the way for T plus one yep. uh, implementation. Do you think that other markets will need to uh, will need to have their own regulatory mandates to, to move to T plus one? Well, it's always desirable to have regulatory mandates. It just makes things most, <laughs> much faster. Like if it's a regulatory agenda, you get the budget, so it, it's easier. But it's not always the approach taken by different markets because different markets also have different appetite in terms of mandating. So it not, it's not so much about the mandating or the rulemaking, it's regulatory certainty. Once you get that regulators go out into the market and provide certainty that they're on board in this mm -hmm. one, that they're serious about implementing this, whether it becomes a rule or a guidance or a best practice, is secondary. So in the case of the US, they actually ended up uh, passing three sets of three rules. One of them we call just for uh, expediency sake, let's call them the settlement rule, mm -hmm. the same day affirmation rule, and the record keeping rule. Among the three, the one that's really impactful is the same day affirmation. Because what that means is the regulation now calls for the details of the trades to be affirmed, confirmed, allocated, affirmed, and confirmed on T plus zero. Which is, if you're talking about the trading day, it's like a short window. Mm -hmm. Markets close at four, you have up to midnight mm -hmm. technically low-wise, mm -hmm. but the industry decided that they should cut off at nine. So mm -hmm. it's actually a five-hour window to yeah. do those things, and that's a chain of, of processing. So if you trade at the close, you're actually hitting that window pretty, pretty squeezing. Mm -hmm. So what happened in the U.S. market was that window became an, issue, uh, an incentive for market players to really look at their end-to-end -end cycle and automate and implement straight through processing as best they could. There's no other way to solve 40 plus one but automation. Like yeah. that automation you can do even before you have a date for T plus one. This is why I'm telling markets. Yeah. Look at automation at the level of your markets now and solve for those automation and the manual clients, manual, manual counterparties as early as you could because you're better positioned to move to T plus one once you've done that. Yeah. This, there's no excuse anymore. You cannot do manual anymore in this environment. Oh, mm -hmm. No, you cannot. Um, that is a great point. And so how quickly do you think that the world should really get up to speed on T plus one? I mean, what are the risks involved when you have such disparate settlement cycles globally? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's start by saying the world is used to having some sort of disparity. T plus two it started in Europe in 2014, the US moved 2017, all other markets in between and some beyond 2017. So it's not new, but it's ideal to have a uniform uh, settlement cycle just because there are some uh, cost, friction costs in having that disparity. But, but having said that, right now we're already more than half, 55% of the global markets is already on T plus one, like mm -hmm, India, China, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. US, and uh, other North American countries, they're all T plus one. So, and we're, there's some estimates that by 2027 to 2030, around 80, 90% of the world would already have moved to T plus one. Mm. And the remaining 
20-10% will just follow because they can't be left behind. So, but it's not a race. Like people, markets will move when they're ready. And actually, it's not so much the date. It's being prepared. Mm -hmm. That's why you can hear about uh, the possibility of really looking at the post-trade process and implementing that same-day affirmation, which is, by the way, for the APAC markets, is called precedent matching. Affirmation is a U.S. term, and that was one of the things that like, threw people off. Like, what is affirmation? It's actually just agreeing, both sides agreeing to the details of the trade so that the settlement instruction can be staged. It's just staging the settlement instruction before sending that down to the depository for settlement. That's, that's the that's simple awesome. way. But getting to that point actually entails a lot of things, and a lot of it really involves revisiting your operating model, making sure that all the parties to the transaction are on the table and ready, ready to dance mm -hmm. as soon as possible as the trade is done, as real time and as speedy and as uh, fast as possible. Now, India had a soft launch of their optional T mm -hmm. plus zero settlement cycle mm -hmm. earlier this year. What's, what's your opinion on this? Do you think uh, T plus one or T plus zero is the optimum target for, for kind of global best practice, would you say? So let's be very clear. Settlement cycles already exist from T plus zero to T plus three, but it's always been there. Market infrastructures have offered the optionality of T plus zero settlement. So it depends on the market segment, it depends on the asset class, it depends on the nature of the transaction. So it's always been there. What India has done, because as I said earlier, it's driven by the retail investors. Mm -hmm. And India, by the way, is similar to China. It's pre-deliver, pre-funding for the retail market. Meaning if you're selling, the security is already there. If you're buying, you already give your cash. So logically, the same, thi the same thing in China. So logically, why would you delay settlement? you're already parted with your asset. So the faster you can conclude the deal, get on with life and turn, the better. That's very different than, than what's happening in the West. The Western market doesn't operate on pre-funded, pre-deliver market. So this is one of the cre crucial difference that we should be mindful of when we talk about why is India T plus zero and why is the rest of the world not moving to T plus zero. Because the, the markets are different. The markets are very, very much different based on what's driving that market. China, India are very retail market, whereas the US are very intermediated institutional market. So they behave differently. So there is no such thing as optimal settlement cycle. We do believe that eventually the world will go to T plus zero, especially when digital assets, because digital assets by their own very nature are atomic settlement ready. Yeah. But it will be in a, in, a, in a period of multiple settlement cycles for a while. And that's not such a bad deal. Like, we've lived like, through that since T plus 3 and T plus 2, T plus 2, T plus 1, T plus 1, T plus 0 eventually. Mm. Well, we've reached our interview uh, plus 0 uh, now, I'm afraid. I'm sure you've got plenty more going on this week here in Beijing. But we've run out of time uh, right now. Nelly, so good to see you here on Cybos TV. Have a wonderful week. That's Nelly Dagdag. Um, Managing Director, APAC Marketing and Communications at DTCC. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you too.